listening to Fountain of Thought with your hosts, Dennis Fountain and Sonny Rain. One small step for man, one giant leap for America. This show contains adult themes and language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to the Fountain of Thought podcast, broadcasting from the Erickson Memorial Studios. This is the podcast where we talk about anything and everything. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at TalkFOT, or visit our website at FountainOfThought.com. Hello, Sonny. Hello, Dennis. How art thou? Well, besides the fact that I have a concussion, pink eye, a cold, diarrhea, complete body aches, pretty good. So you're, what, 80? <laughs> I feel like I'm yeah. 90. 90? Ooh, pushing 90, pushing 90. Ugh. Uh. I can't wait for this winter to end. Uh, well, we just, what'd you get here in town? We got uh, we got about uh, eight, nine inches where I am. Is that what you got about here? Yeah, same yeah. thing here. Yeah, they they were threatening, you know, 12 inches or more, but uh, we only, we, we got about eight or nine. Well, I used to, I used to threaten 12 no, inches or more. But... No, no, you didn't. Not, no, no. <laughs> Two inches or more. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I used to, I used to say, give me 12 inches, I make it hurt. So I gave him six, and I'd have head with a brick. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Welcome to the Fountain of Thought segment, where your all omnipotent host, Dennis Fountain, ponders life events. I love it when I get to ponder life events. <laughs> you love everything that says Dennis Fountain. Dennis Fountain, 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 Fountain. Uh, a little, <laughs> little humor today. Uh,. Why was the why was the guitar teacher arrested? Because uh, he plucked too many strings. Because he fingered a minor. <laughs> yeah. And I turn the mic over to you. That's it. That's that's my that's my ponder. That's it. That that's all you have to ponder. That's today. all I get to ponder today. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, one of the new segments that I wanted to do was like a, a week in history type of thing, a little short segment. But I thought I'd start it off by a little large segment by going over some of the things that happened in this week in past history. I think it makes for a good topic, and there's lots of lots of little discussion points along the way. So, yes, Sonny, unfortunately, I do have a list. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your lists are my favorite. I know. But... Um, uh, my list is necessary because my memory is – I can't, couldn't possibly remember all of these things. So it doesn't matter what time of uh, of year or anything like that of, of these events taking place. It's just interesting events that happen throughout time this week. So the same week but in whatever year it happened, uh, like historical events or something that's really important. So in 1790, the U- U.S. Congress authorized the very first census. Wow. In 1803, Ohio became the 17th state in the United States. Wow. In 1836, Texas declared independence from Mexico. Wow. In 1836 as well, Samuel Colt patented the first revolving barrel multi-shoot firearm right here from Massachusetts. Wow. In 1867, Nebraska became the 37th state in the United States. Wow. And in 1872... <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that what in no way in 1872 was Yogi Bear there. But I'm trying to help you along because there was the world's first national park. And do you know what that park was? Jellystone. (laughs) Yellowstone. Yes, Yellowstone. (laughs) A little trickery there. So in 1896, the world looks mighty good to me. Whatever it is, I think I see, becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. 
So what happened in 1896? That? No. How do you know? Well, maybe, (laughs) but not to make headlines. Well, depends who did it. In 1896, the Tootsie Roll was introduced by Leo Hirschfeld. All right. In 1901, J.P. Morgan formed the U.S. Steel Corporation, which was the world's first billion-dollar corporation. God, that's just amazing, isn't it? I'm almost ready to just break out in tears. Oh, wait to this one. In 1917, Puerto Rico became a U.S. territory, and Puerto Ricans gained American citizenship. Well, that's not. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. In 1919, the Grand Canyon National Park was established. In 1923, the first issue of Time magazine appeared on newsstands. In 1932, the 20-month-old son of Charles Lindbergh was kidnapped. There was just a movie about that. I didn't see it, uh, but there was just a movie regarding that. And this happened in 1933, and you should get this one. We're millionaires, boys. I'll share it with all of you. Why, in a few months, we'll be up in lights on Broadway. Wild, weird, wonderful, the stuff for which movies were made. Adventure to make you wonder if it's true, while your eyes convince you that it is. Truly, the thrill of thrills. Don't miss it. And that would be? I know it, but I can't get the title in my head. King Kong. That was King Kong? Yes, the very first King Kong premiere. Oh, I, hate, I hate King Kong. In 1933, the very best of stop motion animation back then, and that was with uh, Fay Ray, and uh, it performed in New York City for the very first time in 1933. In 1935, uh, Mr. Radar O'Reilly, Radar was first demonstrated by Robert Watson Watt. What does Radar stand for? Radioactive acidosis. Um, well, you got the radio part, right? <laughs> radio detection and ranging. Wow. Radar. Ooh, boy. So we have a we have a Radar O'Reilly question coming up later, so stay tuned for that one. You don't want to miss that one. In 1949, Captain James Gallagher completed the first non-stop around-the-world flight. He completed 23,452 miles in 94 hours in one minute. I really bet you he's bitching about that one minute, though. That that would irk me forever. I, 94 hours in one minute. I'd be like, come on, guys. Can't we round down? <laughs> you know? All right. In 1951, the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. Do you know what, what one that is? What's the 22nd Amendment? 19? No, I couldn't tell you. No? No? Uh, president can only serve two terms. Oh. So I thought George Washington said that. Said that the president can only serve two terms? Yeah. Well, he may have said it, but that wasn't the law. Didn't happen until 1951. So before that, you can serve as many terms as you want. Well, you never saw it. Uh, in the early years, you did. Yeah, they served more. So because they didn't get presidents, but all right. Uh, so 1961, this happened. The Peace Corps gives us a chance to show a side of our country which is too often submerged. Our desire to live in peace our desire to be of help. I hope in the coming months and years that many of you will follow the example of those who've gone before. They, I think, are serving this country well, the cause of freedom and the cause of a peaceful world. I hope this spirit will grow, and that hundreds of others of young Americans and older Americans will go overseas to show our best side show how much we desire to live at peace, there can be no greater service to our country and no source of pride more real than to be a member of the Peace Corps of the United States. I hope that you will join. That was, uh, of course, JFK. And uh, I think they should bring back the Peace Peace Corps, make that a thing. I, I think, honestly, I think when you graduate high school, you should have three choices. One, you're going to a... Uh, four or more year college or university 
or you should serve two years in the Peace Corps or in the service. I think that that's that, that should be obligatory. All right, so in 1964, Cassius Clay, who later became who? Muhammad Ali. Became the world heavyweight boxing champion for the first time by knocking out who? Uh, Joe Lewis. Your first name? Oh, yeah, Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston, there yeah. you go. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. In uh, 1983, Tennessee Williams, the American playwright, passed away. But also in 1983, we had some bittersweet memories because this happened this week in 1983. Well, I guess this is it, huh? Yeah. Fonz, listen, um, I'm a writer, or at least I hope so. Yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's a little easier for me to express myself with words. I wrote this to you this morning because I knew that when we were face to face like this that, uh, well, I might not be able to, to find the words. How do you thank somebody who's been everything to you? Your brother? Your protector? delivered my own child I, I just don't know how I could ever say that I think you just did So that was the uh, Welcome Home episode that aired for the final season of Happy Days, which produced 255 episodes. Wow. Wow. Happy Days did go on for a few more episodes that season, and they ended the series with uh, Chachi and Joni getting married, and everyone thought that the series should have ended with, with this episode because it had Fonzie and everyone in it, and it just was a much better episode than Joni Loves Chachi. But where the hell was Chuck? Um, actually what happened was, is Chuck was supposed to be, well, he was the older brother. Okay. And he was supposed to continue on as Richie's older brother, but they introduced the Fonzie character and he took over that role and was a huge success. So the writers thought that let's just forget about Chuck because Chuck, the actor was signed on for a whole season. was supposed to have a huge role. He was supposed to be the Fonzie in that, that whole thing. He was supposed to teach Richie all of these life lessons and so forth. But when Fonzie came into play, he just stole everything. Fonzie wasn't supposed to be this big character. He was going to be a small supporting cast member. And uh, they had two people that played uh, Chuck, by the way, But uh, and he was supposed to be a much larger role, and it didn't. So the writers just said, well, let's just forget about him. And then that's exactly what happened. They forgot about him, that he didn't even exist anymore. So, yeah, Chuck was gone. So That's nice. <laughs> nice Nice family ties. Just forget about him. He doesn't exist. We yeah. forget about him. We'll just introduce him. This is my older brother, but now, well, I'm, I'm kind of going through the same thing. All right. Also in 1983, this, this episode had me crying. This happened. Attention all personnel. The war is over. MASH is going home. Next. You call me a taxi, I'll be on my way. Share their touching goodbyes and their new beginnings. I'll never forget you. MASH, the end of an era. A two and a half hour special. I miss you. The laughs and tears, the final farewells. Next. That is all. So lots of things happened with that. It was the final episode of MASH, which also had the exact same number of episodes as Happy Days, 255. That was a great show. It was a, was a very good show. Um, that was the longest kiss in history. Uh, well, there were so many one you know first-timers in there. First time they said hell on television. Uh, lots of things happened for MASH. Um, 
more than 106 million people watched the final episode, Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen. It aired on CBS 35 years ago this week. The episode was so highly anticipated that a 30-second advertising spot sold for $450,000 more than any purchase price of any commercial on the Super Bowl of that year. Wow. An estimated 1 million viewers in New York City alone flushed their toilets at the end of the show, (laughs) pouring 6.7 million gallons of water through the city's sewers, causing overflow and pipe damage throughout New York City. There you go. Jiggle, jiggle the handle. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. jiggle, Okay, good, thanks. Uh, The creators wanted to broadcast the show without a laugh track or any pre-recorded laughter, but CBS said, "Uh uh-uh, no way. So they fought and they struggled, and they ended up getting a compromise where they would only have a light chuckle track, which would uh, only appear uh, in scenes where they were not in the surgical tent. So if they were doing surgery, there were no laugh tracks whatsoever. Uh, Since in syndication and the BBC later airing the show, they omitted the laugh track entirely. So there is no more laugh track unless you get an original copy. But I want to go over some of the... I know that listeners, if you haven't watched the show, you don't understand what an impact this show had on us and how many people watched this show. This thing will never, ever happen again. So I have, the again, another list for you, Sonny. (laughs) The top 20 shows, series-ending shows, and what their numbers were. So coming in at number 20 is L.A. Law. 22.1 million people tuned in for that. Number 19 was MacGyver. L.A. Law. Yeah. That was with um, Corbin Bernstein. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I love that show. And there's some dipshit in Texas that used to love that show. Yeah, I love that show, too. Uh, Number 19 was MacGyver, 22.3 million. Number 18, St. Elsewhere, 22.5 million. Number 17, Full House, 24.3 million. 16, Golden Girls, 27.2. Happy Days comes in at number 15 with 27.2. This one surprised me a little bit. Number 14 is Gunsmoke. 30.9 million viewers tuned into the final episode of Gunsmoke. Number 13 is Everyone Loves Raymond with 32.9 million. Number 12 was Dallas, 33.3. Number 11 is Frasier with 33.7. And this one surprised me as well. Number 10 in the top 10, the number 10 series finale of all time with 34.2 million, Star Trek The Next Generation. Really? Yeah. Uh, number nine was Home Improvement, 35.5, followed by Family Ties at number eight, 36.3. Number seven was All in the Family with 40.2 million. Number six is The Cosby Show with 44.4 million. Number five, Magnum P.I., 50.7 million. Friends, 65.9, comes in at number four. Number three of all time, Seinfeld, with 76.3. And the number two is Cheers, 84.4. So let's just look at this for a second. The number two series ender of all time is 84 million, and MASH has 106. They trounced it. I mean, they literally squished all numbers, and there is nothing ever outside of a Super Bowl that will compare to these numbers. This still holds. Today, this is the number one watched season-ending right, episode. episode ever. And that'll never be broken. That will never, ever be broken. It's just that was that was such an amazing show. Love that show to death. Two spinoffs, by the way. Did you know it had two? What had two? MASH. No. Yes. It had Trapper John MD, which had none of the original characters in it. But it was focused around Trapper John uh, being stateside after he got out of the war. Well, like, yeah, I remember that show. Yeah. I didn't know they, they connected the two together because it, it seemed like it was in the eighties. That was that was him after he got out of the war. But that was yeah, that was a spinoff. That was the connection yeah, the, to Mash. Yeah, but the Mash was the Korean War, and that was back it, in the fifties. Well, I listen. I didn't how, write it. How the hell can you spin off something into the eighties? That well, they did. They they did. They just used the name. Yeah. And then the other one, uh, which only had two episodes, was Radar. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know he had his own show. <laughs> but, yeah. Neither did he. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was in it, so. So, yeah, so Radar was in it. All right. So uh, we're, we're getting uh, moving along in the timeline here. In 1984, this happened. <laughs> You're a whole new generation. You're dancing through the day. You're grabbing for the magic on the run. 
So Pepsi rebranded itself and uh, they came out with that uh, generation commercial as a music video on MTV in 1984, marking a complete change for Pepsi in a new direction heading forward. And do I miss Michael Jackson? Yeah, he the was old a- Michael Jackson. I really do. I really he, he was a genius. He was, he was the king of pop. Ah, he was so, and his music was so good. It really, it still is good. Not was, still is good. It just, it, it's a shame, you know. It's just a shame what's happened. Him and Prince. I wasn't that much of a Prince fan, but I, I agree, he was a genius. I do agree. Guitar, he was, guitar player. Yeah. He was unbelievable. His songwriting was unbelievable. He was, he, he was good. Yeah, he, he was I, a little touched, but yeah. All right, so uh, moving on a couple years into the future, this happened. It's 1987. Do you know where Freddy is? There's no waking up from this nightmare. No! Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 3, Dream Warriors. First Friday, February 27th at a theater near you. Consult local listing. So that was my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street. I love number three, Dream Warriors. That was my favorite of all of them. That was mine, too. Yeah, love that one. Now, you were more of a Friday the 13th fan than you were a Nightmare on Elm Street fan? or uh, Halloween. Halloween, more of a Halloween. But the only good Halloween one was the first one, really. That's it. (laughs) I mean, I watched the other ones. Yeah. They were... They got dumber as they went along, but I liked Halloween and I liked Friday the 13th. And I'd say F- Freddy came in third. See, I like Freddy because he was sarcastic. He was, you know, he had an attitude and he was, he, he, t- I, for different reasons, and he talked. Friday the 13th, that was all right for me. That really wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan of that one. I did like Halloween, the original one. And again, we, we talked about this on the show several times, but I just like that, that person just stalking you. I just, I don't know. It was just, Something I liked. Okay, so Friday the Thirteenth was your was your favorite. Well, the very first one. Yeah. <clears throat> would you Would you like to go there? Go where? To the camp and sleep over. Really? Yes. This being offer is made by Camp Nobi Bosco, the still operative Boy Scout camp that once served as the shooting location for Sean Cunningham's slasher mega hit Friday the Thirteenth. The normally closed to the public camp has a mildly accepting relationship with its place in film history opening for tours periodically, usually on Friday the 13th. But it has never allowed horror fans to actually camp out and really bask in the feeling of being pitchforked to death by a guy in a hockey mask. So now you can go to Camp Crystal Lake and you can have Sleepaway Camp. The uh, event takes place April 13th, Friday the 13th. Uh, Tours will be open and the price is $175 to spend the night there. So Yeah, they they got that idea from Psych. Yeah, so you can go sleep there. Did you see that Psych episode? I saw all of them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the movie too. The movie was all right, but I didn't get to see the movie yet, so don't ruin it for me. Okay, I won't ruin it for you. You gonna go sleep away? No, no. All right, uh, moving along. In 1993, a bomb exploded at the World Trade Center in New York. Well, right from there to something tragic. A uh, blast killed six people and injured more than 1,000. In 1997, Scottish scientists announced the successful cloning of sheep. The very first sheep was cloned, and her name was... Goat. Dolly. (laughs) So, uh, cloning people is next. And then, uh, on this date, in 2003, Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood passed away. Wouldn't you like to be my neighbor? No. Okay. Well, that's it that I got for um, uh, This Week in History. I got one from this week in history. Yes. Actually, it's from the future. Yeah? Yeah. It's from um, 2120. What's going to happen in 2120? Enjoy your extra big-ass fries. You didn't give me no fries. I got an empty box. Would you like another? Extra big-ass fries. I said I didn't get any. Thank you. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No. Oh, I'm sorry you're having come trouble. Come on. I'm My kids sorry are you're starving. This should help you calm down. Please come back when you can afford to make a purchase. Your kids are starving. Carl's Jr. believes no child should go hungry. You are an unfit mother. Your children will be placed in the custody of Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. Fuck you. I'm eating. 
Twenty-one twenty. Yeah. Well, I won't be around for that, but I'll take your word for it. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for uh, this week in history. Uh, hopefully, we'll bring this back this segment in a smaller, shorter, more condensed. 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 What the hell is condensed? <laughs> In a more condensed fashion, maybe we'll even add some background music to it, to, you know, to, to liven it up a little bit. <laughs> All right. We are going to be right back after I open up that time capsule I made when I was in grammar school. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance, all to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law-abiding, until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. Wit and charm, DJs Dennis and Sonny have. Fountainofthought.com, website you go. Episodes new every Friday at 7. Helps if I turn the microphone on. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor or advertising on our show, please drop us an email at talkfot at gmail.com. Dot com. The, the moment you've been waiting for is finally here. Yes, true or false headlines. All right, everyone. True or false headlines is being sponsored by the Ludlow Lions Club. Do you want to help those in need in your neighborhood? Volunteer to help today by visiting www.ludlowlions.org or by giving them a call at 754-900-ROAR. That's 754-900-ROAR. <laughs> All right, how this works is I will read two headlines. One is true, one is false. Sonny and the audience at home will try to pick which one is true and which one is false. All right, here we go. Woman sues California for seeing Bigfoot or a woman dragged into Bigfoot's cave and discovers gold. The first one is true. The first one is true. Claudia Ockley is positive that she and her two daughters came across Bigfoot in a tree in Southern California last year. But when she called different state authorities to report the sighting, she got the same response. Nothing. Nope, they told her. You saw a bear. As a result, the 46-year-old has filed suit against the state for falling to recognize Sasquatch as a distinct species. Ockley's sighting includes phone video shot by her daughter near Lake Arrowhead in the San Bernardino Mountains. Ockley filed her suit with documentary filmmaker Todd Standing, who made the Netflix film Discovering Bigfoot, and who believes that this sighting is legit. State officials will not comment on any pending litigation. Quote, he looked like a Neanderthal man with his hair all over him, said Ockley, who says this is the second sure sighting of Bigfoot that she has made. He had solid black eyes. He had no expression on his face at all. He did not show his teeth. He just stared at all three of us. The three then safely walked away. She says, among other things, the lawsuit says that endangering the public, the state is, by not recognizing Bigfoot and calls it to, quote, manage the wildlife species, end quote, and to protect his habitat. Ockley is leaving fruit and snacks out for Bigfoot, along with a voice-activated book that includes recordings of words like fur and candy and samples of each in an attempt to communicate with Bigfoot. Wow. Where's the six million dollar man? <laughs> he can fix this, right? It's a little bit more expensive than though. Oh, is it? Okay. All right, here we go with number two. Man finds penny in Uber car worth ten million dollars, or man blacks out and wakes up to pay one thousand six hundred and thirty five dollar Uber fare. 
Second one is true. You got them both right today. You are a good, good doobie. All right, Mr. Bachman is living proof you probably shouldn't drink an Uber. He was hit with a $1,635.93 Uber fare after accidentally taking the ride service from near West Virginia University campus, where he was partying with friends last Friday night, to his home in New Jersey. We went to a frat party and then went to the bar. I was getting drinks all night. I probably spent like $200 at the bar and already drinking all day, Bachman says. Basically, I kind of just blacked out. Needless to say, Bachman doesn't really remember calling himself an Uber. He says he woke up to the driver telling him they were about an hour away from New Jersey. I was just like, what? That's crazy. Why, what, 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 why did you agree to take me to New Jersey from West Virginia? Bachman says. Five hours and 300 miles later, ordering an Uber, Bachman was home. The ride would have been a good deal cheaper if Bachman didn't drunkenly treat himself to a more expensive Uber XL. I didn't even know those existed. Bachman challenged the fare, arguing he would have told the driver to take him to his friend's place near the university campus, not all the way to New Jersey. Quote, I know I wouldn't send it to my house, end quote, Bachman says. I know where I was. Uber states Bachman did indeed give the driver his home address, and Bachman agreed to pay the fare after the company contacted him, threatening a lawsuit. Wow. Wow. All right, is you pool looking like Sonny's future a little murky? Then let no worries for you. Professional pool service handle all your pool needs. Serving Orange, Oceola, and Polk counties in Florida. Clear your mind by clearing your pool. Give them a call today at 407-953-7926. Once again, 407 407- Nine five three seven nine two six. All right, how this works is Sonny and I will volley movie sound clips at each other and attempt to stump one another and win food. We will have three attempts to do this with one pass and one clue as options. At the end of every month, the loser of the game will buy the winner lunch as well as a lucky listener. And at the end of the year, we'll do the same, but for dinner. You can play along by entering our contest at fountainofthought.com. And you, too, could win lunch or dinner gift card. For details and registration, please visit our website, www.fountainofthought.com. Speaking of dinner, just food in general, is McDonald's just the the epitome of hiring dumbos? I don't know. Why have you had a bad experience? Three times I've gone there to get a sausage with muffin with egg. First one, I get Canadian bacon. The second one... It's just sausage and English muffin. And then today, they put the scrambled eggs, the folded scrambled egg. Yeah. They put that on it instead of the the egg it's supposed to be on it. Well, my answer to that would be, and I'm sorry to say, but a minimum wage employee that really doesn't care. There are minimum minimum wage employees that do care, but this one doesn't care. Well, you know, I, I go to Subway, I go to Taco Bell, I go to Domino's, and I don't have these problems. Well, maybe you should talk to your manager friend over there and tell him to hire better people like the Fountains. <laughs> Ever since they left, the whole place went to shit. All right, so, um, Sonny, you lost. Uh, for the month of February, I had 11 wins, you had 9. So, uh, you owe me lunch. And for the year, we stand with Dennis 3, Sonny 1. And uh, we pulled out a lucky winner for this week's lunch card. And congrats go out to Ross Weaver, who will be receiving a $15 gift card for lunch on Fountain of Thought. Well, not at Fountain of Thought, but on us. In other words, we're paying it. We're buying you a $15 gift card for lunch, Ross. And we'll get that in the mail to you shortly. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm assuming I'm going first. If you'd like. Okay. Uh, It is drama. The category is drama. 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 Mercy is for the weak. We do not train to be merciful here. A man face you, he is enemy. Enemy deserve no mercy. Karate Kid. Is that your final answer? Yep. It's the Karate Kid Part 2. That was not. That was the ending of Karate Kid. No, that was Karate Kid Part Two. No shit. Yes, yes. 
All right. Aren't you proud of yourself? Write this down. Why don't you rub your nipples now? <laughs> I'm going to lick my fingers instead. <laughs> Science fiction. Science fiction. Okay, uh, swear it one more time. I have absolute, have absolute power. Yes. <laughs> E.T. E.T. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going for drama again. I think not good. I know. Somebody always gets hurt. Okay. Come on, admit it. We we'll kick some butt. Fighting not good, but if must fight, we. See, you're just, you're just being a jerk. <laughs> it, it's it's Karate Kid Four. But I don't, I don't know the subtitle of it. <laughs> it's the one with the broad in it. It is not Karate Kid 4. That is incorrect. And there is no subtitle. It has a whole new title. I will give you a moment to think. I have no idea. I'll pass. Oh, that was a good move. That was a good move. Uh... The next Karate Kid. Yeah, that's what I said. You're, you're, you're just playing games with me today. <laughs> All right, here is your next one. It's drama. <laughs> Inside, you have strong root. No need nothing except what inside of you to grow. Understand? Yeah, I do understand. You're right. <laughs> Karate Kid. Is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> the Karate Kid 3. Yeah, I was going to go with that one, too. All right, I'll take my next one, please. <laughs> Danny, I'm begging you. In front of God, in front of the family, in front of my neighborhood. I swear to you, Danny, please don't do this to me. Uh, one more time, please. Drama. Oh, thank you. Danny, I'm begging you. In front of God, in front of the family, in front of my neighborhood. I swear to you, Danny, please don't do this to me. Uh, clue, please. The gentleman talking owns a diner. About last night? Uh, fucking jerk. <laughs> All right, here is your last one. Comedy. We we intend to prove that they... My cousin, Vinny. ...is circumstantial. All right, good boy, you got one. Uh, this is um, science fiction. Science fiction. I'll tell you one thing that every good soldier knows. The only thing that counts in the end is power. Naked, merciless force. I'm going to pass. I figured you would. What is it? Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, next one is uh, drama. I was thinking that, but there were so many to choose from, I couldn't figure it out. All right, drama. Got it. I got a question. You guys know so much about women. How come you here at, like, a gas and sip on a Saturday night, completely alone, drinking beers, no women anywhere? <clears throat> By choice, man. That's yeah, right, man. It's a conscious choice. choice. It's a choice, yeah. man. Choosing to be here. I want to be here, man. Uh, one more time, please. I got a question. You guys know so much about women. How come you here at like a gas and sip on a Saturday night, completely alone, drinking beers, no women anywhere? By choice, man. That's yeah, right, man. It's a conscious choice. choice. It's a choice, it's a choice, choice man. man. Choosing to be with you. I want to be here. A uh, stab in the dark. Is that? Say anything? Anything, anything. (laughs) 
Thank you for playing along. It's been wonderful. It's time to dig deep. That only means one thing. It's time for questions from my side. All right, everyone, this is being sponsored by Mr. Bill's Boot and Shoe Repair in Pantego, Texas, just, just outside of Arlington. Tell Mr. Bill you heard this ad and receive a 20% discount on any shoe repair. Find them online at mrbills.net, where they'll save your soul and gladly, gladly die, die for you. you. All right, how this works is you, the audience, the listener, send in your question. It can be anything and everything. Or just, everything and anything. Right, just like our podcast, and each week we will randomly select three questions to read live on the air. And this week, the first question is, uh, who is or has been your favorite president? Ronald Reagan. Oh, that's my answer. Uh, Ronald Reagan was mine, too. That's a, a kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Trump could be, but I don't know yet. It's too early to tell. Oh, Ronald um, Reagan had but, big, huge balls. Yeah. Well, you know what? Ronald Reagan, though, was he always made me feel comfortable. It was like he was the father figure. And he, I don't know, there's just something about him. When he was president, I feel I, I felt at ease, you know? Well, I got a little nervous towards the end when he started getting Alzheimer's. Well, there was a good movie about that. Did you happen to see that, that movie? No, I didn't. Yeah, um, it wasn't as bad as what everyone thought it was um he did was a little wacky into the um uh, uh astrology stuff there him and his wife were a little weird into that but um allegedly but uh, no i always always liked ronald reagan yeah good good president all right and the next one is he made a good genesis um video too yeah that's another group i phil collins was a genius too that, that guy was smart very good I haven't heard nothing from from him or Genesis in forever. Mm-mm. All right, uh, it is uh, wow. This is right up that questions thing. Uh, if you could get lessons from any musician, who would it be? You go ahead. Um, I know nothing about music other than playing it. I can't. I I tried the guitar. I tried um, the trumpet. Uh, I, I I just I'm not musically inclined at all. I just cannot do it. So whoever would be teaching me would be useless. But um. And you're, and you're definitely not a candidate for Dancing on the Stars. No. <laughs> no, I've got no rhythm. None whatsoever. Even beat mixing is hard when they show me the beats. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't know. I would just go for You know what? Who, who I like is, and this is going to sound weird, but um, Amy Grant. I would, well, I was a keyboard player, a well, half-assed keyboard player. So if I had to say, if I was going to get lessons either from... Elton John or Billy Joel. Those are two good ones, yeah. 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 Either one yeah. of those would uh, hmm. definitely make me into a star. Yeah. Billy Joel, he's more your style, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Billy Joel. All right, and the last question is... Oh, God. This is right up your alley. Uh, do you fart in public <laughs> and blame others? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing I like to do with the crop dust people in Walmart. <laughs> uh, you got to be in the clothing section and you got to drop it so it's right in between all the shirts and stuff. So it kind of yeah. stays contained. Is that and, it? Yeah. and then you stand over so somewhere. So 10 minutes later, it's still lingering. Yeah. <laughs> you stand away and watch to see who walks through it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, my answer is no. I don't do that. I am proud of my farts. You're proud of them? Yes, I take credit for them. And everyone at home, they go, did you fart? I go, no, if I fart, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm proud of my farts. I go, I take a deep breath. I love to smell my own farts. Take them in. Oh, love it. Yes, that was me. <laughs> you are the most strangest individual I know. It's the dog farts I can't stand. Oh, those are so disgusting. Ugh. Ugh. Looking for a little-known but great movie to watch this weekend? Then you're listening to the right podcast. Here's an awesome movie recommendation. My recommendation is a retro. I'm going to go back in time, and that would be the uh, Karate Kid (laughs) trilogy. Because I don't consider the last one anything. Well, there's more than that, you know, because then you have the next Karate Kid, which was the fourth That's one. I, I, I hated that one. Then you have the remake with Will Smith's That's kid there. Sucked. Jaden Smith. 
That sucked. Yeah. Sucked. Sucked. <laughs> oh, Daniel San. So your recommendation is to watch the original uh, Karate Kid. I was trilogy. just being sarcastic because you played games with me today. <laughs> I won too, didn't I? Yeah. Well, wait. I'm going to get even. I'm going to get even. All right. Sonny's pet peeve of the week. I know you're a big, um, yeah. I am big. It's true. I'm trying not to be so big, but yeah, I am. You're a news junkie, and you you don't you don't watch daytime TV. But of course, you know, taking care of my mother, I'm forced to watch it. I am so sick and tired of sitting down to watch TV to get my mind off my troubles. And every other commercial is either some pharmaceutical product for oh do you have a drippy nose well here we got this product but and it's got a you list must be of, watching the prices right <laughs> yeah and it's got a list of side effects it's like why would you bother that or it's a cancer commercial yeah well that's because it's who watches that show old people oh my god I it's mean, like you want to put on your commercial for your demographics but it's so depressing <laughs> Just, I mean, it really gets on my nerves. It's like, you got to be kidding me. One after another, after another, after another. Yeah. Once in a while, you get a good commercial like that. There's one for, um, oh, what the hell? I don't remember the product, but the kid's, he's in the bathroom and he's trying to get his belt undone. And, he, and it's stuck and he yells to his mother, Mom, we, we have a situation. Oh, yeah, here. yeah. That one's that one's hilarious. No, you know who's come out with good commercials lately and no one's, they haven't gotten any credit is um, uh, M&M's. Oh, that one with, <laughs> did you see the one with Danny DeVito? Yeah. That, you want to was... eat me? Yeah. He's <laughs> running around the city. You want to eat me? You want to eat me? And then they just did one for Easter. And um, it's kids going to see the Easter bunny. <laughs> and, and apparently the, the one of the M&Ms is getting arrested. He goes, no, he tried to eat me first. He ended up in my mouth. He tried to eat me first. I haven't seen that one oh, yet. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, those but that are... Danny DeVito and that. Yeah. You want to eat me? Yeah. You want to eat me? Those are funny. So, mad props to M&M's. Yeah, you guys are doing a good job with your commercials. All right. Any final thoughts there, Sunny Rain? Yeah. We hear the donger. Oh, we hear the donger. The donger. Okay. It's time for North Korean radio. And this one goes out to the donger. Why has all of a sudden the donger have decided that he wants to talk to President Trump. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Very wonderful question. <laughs> Do you have the answer? No. <laughs> but isn't it strange? All of a sudden, he just comes out of the woodwork and says well, he wants to talk to Donald Trump. He wants to reunite Korea. He's going one- down to South Korea for the first time ever that any one has gone there since the Korean War. What, but what? Just two months ago, he was a whack job, and all of a sudden now he's well. He still is a whack job, but I, I Donald Trump's what? It's working, and everyone listen. Like him or not like him, as a president or as a person, it doesn't matter. But you have to agree that certain things that he does is working, and that's one of the things that's working. The sanctions are working. Um, his not his being unpredictable is working. Him saying that he'll just nuke the hell out of you is working. So I think he realizes that he needs to come and talk to somebody, or else he's going to get his ass whooped. I mean, no matter how much you want to brag and be you know braggadocious about everything, there is no way in the world that North Korea is going to win a war against us. It's just not going to happen. Braggadocious? Yeah, bragging. Braggadocious. Braggadocious. It's not going to happen. And I, he realizes that. And I think that's part of the reason why he's going to South Korea. Because in North Korea, they, they monitor everything and they, they wouldn't be broadcast. You wouldn't get to see it. Uh, so I, I, I think that that way it's separate. And he can say whatever he wants when he goes back to North Korea and say, Oh, I won. I took over Donald Trump. I told Donald Trump, go hell. You go hell. You know, I, I don't know. But so, so you think he'll come to the White House? or No, that's not going to happen. No. It'll that, be neutral ground? Well, he's going to South Korea to um, the um, uh, there's a, the peace the peace pavilion, I believe, is where he's going. And that's where they're going to meet. That's where they're going to meet. Yeah, huh. yeah. So uh, and, and uh, who who knows? I I, I don't know. But uh, you're right. I I don't have the answer. But strange strange things are happening. Yeah. Yes, they are. All right, that's going to do it for us, folks. Uh, reminding everyone to subscribe to our podcast via your listening presence. <laughs> Uh, reminding everyone to subscribe to our podcast via your listening preference. I did want to add one thing I forgot before we go, and this reminded me of it, is uh, 
I have warned everyone. No one listened to me. They all thought I don't know what I'm talking about, but iHeartRadio is filing bankruptcy. So there goes uh, thousands of radio stations across the country. Who knows where that's going to end? But as of right now, they're still in operation. Uh, you can still listen to us on iHeartRadio, um, but uh, there are other ways to listen to us too. So just so everyone knows. Don't forget to visit our website, fountainofthought.com, for contests and so much more. And remember, everyone, be a fountain, not a, not a drain. drain. I can't imagine myself with anybody other than Dennis. He's amazing to everybody, and I wouldn't want to be with anybody other than him. Hello. Hello. Son, you gotta know how to handle it. One wrong move and you're done for. You must harness your bosoms. Show me the money.